Welcome to another episode of Eatbook Vlogs, I'm Mendon and in this new series, we're going to check out legendary old hawkers to see whether they live up to their reputation or not. Right now, we are at Sui Guan Hokkien Mee, which has a legendary status alongside Lorong Torena Hokkien Mee, which is run by the owner's brother. And he has been running here for over 40 years already. And there's like a huge stream of customers. We are just a bit earlier. So let's go find out from them what's so good about the Hokkien Mee. What's your, what's your favorite part about this plate of noodles? Um, I guess it's the charcoal taste. And because it's using, using charcoal to, to fry the Hokkien Mee. So I guess that's the unique selling point on this plate mm. of Hokkien Mee. My feedback will be it's a little bit pricey. Uh, the bigger portion, I guess, and the more wok it is. I think the ingredient is fine, but for $6, I think it can be much better. Do you, do you come here often? Yeah, sometimes. This dish, what is your, your favourite part about the Hokkien Mee? Prawn. Mee, nah. prawn uh -huh. and uh, sotong. Have you tried mm. other Hokkien Mee before? I have tried. PQ. Uh. So this one rang how, uh, how high? This one best. Uh. This one best? Uh? Yeah. Why, why, why is this the best? Because Michael bring me here. <laughs> this is the best. Why is this the best Hokkien Mee? The amount is not too big, not too small, just nice. Uh -huh. And the quality of food is good. Mm. What, what, what makes it different from the rest of the Hokkien Mee? You it got a wok hay taste. Uh. Mm. What about the liao? Le? Enough. La. I mean, uh, this is the price you pay, not cheap. It costs you $6 a plate. For a small plate, considering it's on the high side. Mm, but you still come in regularly. La. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, so this plate that I have is a smaller size. It is six bucks for just one person's portion. La. And to me, I think uh, as legendary as it might be or it can possibly be, I cannot imagine paying more than four fifty five bucks for a plate of Hokkien Mee. But if it is as good as what everyone says, right, and if it's as good as what Sufon Koko says, right, I'm gonna put my money on it. La. So in front of me, for this Hokkien Mee, right, we have the very standard yellow noodles, we have the thin bihun, we've got sotong, we've got prawns, and of course we have like our pork lard to go alongside with it. Usually, right, when I eat my Hokkien Mee, I wouldn't want to like squeeze the lime because sometimes it will like overpower the taste of the noodles or like, overpower the taste of the stock. But for this one, right, considering how hype they are for like the charcoal smokiness, right, I'm just gonna add a bit of lime to see whether it cuts through that smokiness that I imagine. It's such a complex dish. Eh. You've got your stock has to be done well, your noodles have to be done well, and then your accompaniments, all the ingredients, has to be done at a certain level or standard also. It's legendary. Eh. So I of course I'm gonna be nitpicky about this, right? First impression, right? This isn't the kind of Hokkien Mee that I usually go for. The kind that I will go for, right, is usually a bit on the drier side with a bit more bihun and like the chili already fried into it. A good example would be if you go to Golden Mouth Food Complex, there's one at like basement one. So that's like the closest of my type la, of noodles for Hokkien Mee. So this is a bit wetter kind. So let's see whether this can tweak my perception, maybe consider my options to my world of Hokkien Mee. Okay, I'm just gonna mix everything in first. Uh, without the chili, and then I'll try it with the chili later on because I'm gonna rate the chili. So the first thing that you will taste in this bowl of noodles right, is that something that they are very, very well known for, and that is the charring and the smokiness that you get from frying this plate of noodles over charcoal. So this is like one big thing that sets it apart from the rest of the Hokkien Mee stalls that I've tried before. The not so pro point of the noodles and the stock itself is that okay, maybe it's personal preference lah that I like my stock to be a bit more pungent. I don't really taste the for lack of a better word, prawniness from the stock. So that's for the noodles. You know why I don't prefer wet Hokkien Mee? It's because when you put so much liquid into a plate of noodles like this, it gets mushy very easily. So one thing that I appreciate here is that I can still chew on the noodles, I can still bite on the noodles without it falling apart in my mouth with all the other ingredients. You always want to have that bit of texture, but I figure that the texture will come in the form of the pork lard that they have put inside. So you get a crisp from it also. Next up, right, we'll be trying the prawns. They actually give three prawns, which I feel can be a bit more for a smallest plate of Hokkien Mee. But let's see the quality of it. Lah. What I'm looking for is a good bite, something that is succulent, and hopefully it is not powdery, it is not grainy. I think the prawns could be a bit fresher. It tasted a bit too soft for my liking. And when I was chewing off the tail, right, it didn't come off as cleanly as I expected it to be. Okay, next element, sotong. Honestly, I don't have really high expectations of squid in general. Lah. 
I think the rule of the squid here is to just give it the entire plate a bit more bite rather than just a big mash of noodles, tauge and white bee hoon. I like chilli and there are two ways that I will test the chilli here. The first way is to just have it by itself and the second way, which you guys will see later, is that I will mix it into the entire plate and I will just have it full like that. By the way it looks right, it kind of looks like, you know if you want to watch the Jamie Oliver cooks the fried rice, it's like a chilli jam that he used. <laughs> it might taste better than it looks lah. So the chilli is definitely not chilli jam, okay? There's a bit of brine to it. Other than the chilli right there, they've probably added in a bit of like anchovies, a bit of something that is reminiscent of sambal, but not really sambal. It errs actually on the sweeter side, so people who actually don't like to eat spicy things can have this and to also mix it into their noodles. As I'm mixing it, it actually rolls up into a ball. And let me show, just show you how much you are getting for six bucks worth. Basically getting this. The amount of chilli that they gave, was a bit too little for my liking. To me, this is a good amount to add into your Hokkien Mee. So I would like probably add like two, three teaspoons more of the chili. But I think the chili, what the chili does, right? Remember, remember when I said that the chili has a bit of brine to it? It adds that bit of kick while supplementing that like seafoody kind of taste la, to the entire bowl of noodles. It brings it up to be a very complete dish. La. So now, time to rate the entire plate by its separate components. So I'll talk about the noodles, I'll talk about the stock the ingredients and then the chilli. So for the noodles, right, I will add in probably his technique. Like I will give props to that. So the noodles out of 10, I will give it a solid 7.5. On the stock front, like what I said just now, it lacks that brine, it lacks that kick from the prawns. La. So it is a very normal stock, which is possible. I'm not saying that it's bad. So I'm just going to give it a 6. So for the ingredients, I will give it a 6. And then the chilli. Okay, the chilli to me, it's good. It's not just decent, it's good. So I'll give it 8. So for this play of Hokkien Mee, I give it a grand score of 7. Does it live up to the hype? I think this is a dish that you should try at least once in your life because it is that fun of a dish to eat. From watching the uncle cook with a huge wok, with charcoal burning heavily, fiercely under the wok, to sitting down, trying all the different components and getting that tinge of smokiness with every bite. Uh. It's a very fun experience to have, but it is not one that I will come back regularly for. So on ebook site, right, if you Google like Sui Guan Hokkien Mee, right, you will find Sufon's review on it and Sufon actually gave it a 9 out of 10. Whereas I give it a 7. La. So sometimes it might be a bit inconsistent. Coming into this, right, I had quite high expectations eh, that every part of the dish would reach the 8 out of 10 mark. But the reality is that it is still hawker food. It is rustic, it is strong, but I think my expectations are a bit too high la, for the first episode. <laughs> Final verdict! Is it worth its legendary status? I would say yes, just because of the way that the Uncle Cook is talking me. Thank you guys for watching the first episode of our new series. If you've got other legendary hawker stores to recommend, leave their names down in the comment section down below. And if you like this video, you can watch more of our videos over there. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Bye, I'm out!